The Lord is good. And uh, all the time. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for being here. May the good Lord bless you. Thank you, choir, for serving the youth choir and the, our church choir. God bless you because of that ministry. And allow me to appreciate those who have served the Lord from the morning up to this particular moment. May the good Lord bless you in a very special way. I want to most sincerely thank God for giving us an opportunity to come here today that we may once again have to listen and learn what he has for us this day. The truth is that he has spoken to us the entire week in the concept of our stewardship. And I want to um, say that uh, to me personally, God has spoken to me. And I don't know whether he has done also to you if you found time to listen to his messages throughout the week. I want to welcome you to, de to, 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 to today's presentation that is um, more of uh, what we have been discussing the entire week. But before then, allow me uh, from the pastor's desk make this emphasis that uh, tomorrow we have uh, the workers' seminar and all the church workers kindly you are requested to attend. Please, affair yourself because all the facilitation has been made possible to our learning as the church leaders of this particular church. And I want to also say this, that uh, you are reminded that after you have taken your lunch, kindly find your way to church. Because in the afternoons, there are a lot of kamukunjis out, outside there which are not good. So kindly, if you forget, the pastors will come to remind you, pray for you, and remind you wherever you will be seated in the afternoon. And I think that is being good enough. So having said that, I want to invite you that we may once again have an experience with the Lord this particular hour that uh, we may be reminded of what we are supposed to do as the children of God. Before then, let us pray. Eternal gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much because of the opportunity you have given us to be in this church and the opportunity to learn from your old scriptures. My Father, once again, exalt yourself. Speak for yourself through me and speak to your children. May you be experienced in this particular midst. My God, that honor and glory will be back unto thee forevermore. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our stewardship week of emphasis has had a theme which said that uh, Christ's love compels us. But the overall theme for the Quinquinium says God first. Then this year, specifically, God decided to speak to his church, offer the theme, Christ's love compels us, which came from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and verse 15. Where the Bible said that uh, for the love of God compels us. And if you do a cross check on other fashions, they say that the love of God controls us. And other fashion says that the love of God informs us. So then that is to mean as a child of God, I'm supposed to be controlled by the love of God. I'm supposed to be informed by the love of, of God. That is to say, what I do, what I say, where I go, 
and how I behave. All those are supposed to be informed by the love of God. That is why we sang the song which was saying, Take me to Calvary. Because at Calvary, that is where Christ Jesus died for us. Because John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not do what? Shall not perish, but do what? Have an everlasting life. That is to say, what pushed God to send his only begotten son to die for you and to die for me? That is love. And when somebody has done something out of love, you are supposed to respond back out of love. But uh, the opposite is true in this particular present world. Whereby you can serve somebody with love, but they will just serve you back with something else. And that is what informs why Christ Jesus came and died for us. That is to say, even if Christ came to die for his own, when we were unworthy, when we risked to serve the death of Christ Jesus on the cross, still we are not moved by the love of God to do things on how they are supposed to be done. Yet we are not moved by the love of God to be responsible Christians to know what we are supposed to do and where we are supposed to do it and how we are supposed to do it anyway. So that is why this uh, year they came up with this theme that let entirely my life as a child of God, let entirely my life as a pastor be compelled, be informed by Christ's love. Praise the Lord. Today I want us to explore the concept of the subject which says rejected rejected i don't know whether you have ever gone to an atm machine and you just do an insertion of that particular atm of yours irrespective of how, of how much money is in there those of us who are fond of going to check parents says even if we, when we know there's nothing left i don't know whether you're waiting for angels to put some some money in your accounts but who knows maybe god will feast it at night and I put some cash in there. So I don't know whether you have ever gone to an ATM machine after inserting that card of yours, just said rejected. And I want to ask, how do you feel? Or when you went just searching for something in your account <laughs> and you find nil, how was the reaction? Or when you went and did the insertion and you got a lot of money in there, how was your reaction? I want to guess that you marveled. Come with me to the book of Genesis chapter 4 and the first 5. The Bible says, But unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Friends, I want to remind you that the book of Genesis has got two major divisions. That is the patriarchal history and the primitive history. That is to say the two divisions, they are intentional. And it is true that uh, more of the first portion of the book of Genesis, it speaks of the creation story the fall of man, the fraud story, and the dispensation between you transit to the patriarchs in the book of Genesis. And we all know that the patriarchs which the book of Genesis speaks of are Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. So the first we have just read finds itself in the first portion of the book of Genesis and to be precise it finds its way in the fall of man and because it finds itself in the fall of man 
I want to believe that after the fall in the Garden of Eden, the Bible is very clear that God blessed Adam and Eve with two young men. And uh, I want to believe that after God blessed Adam and Eve with these two pure, you know, handsome young men, I want to believe that Adam and Eve, as loving and caring parents, they had told their sons about the creation story. And I want to believe that the parents of Apple and Cain, they had told, they have been told about the fall of man. I want to believe that uh, the parents of these two young men, they were informed about the serpent which deceived them in the Garden of Eden, and they turned against the will, the filled will of God in the old scriptures. Because as a good parent, there are some things you are supposed to inform your children. Because this concept of creation story and on how our first parents fell, there are things which actually affected their life and our life here up to date. That is why I want to believe that they have they are told them that uh, then the serpent said to the woman, and I want to guess this is the wife to, um, to Adam who was saying this, that uh, at some point the serpent came and they deceived your mom and uh, told your mom that you would not surely die. For God knows that the day you will eat, these fruits, your eyes will be opened and you will be wise as God. I want to believe that these parents had told their sons about how God came in the Garden of Eden after they fell and he was seeking them by asking Adam, where are you? Because verse 9 of the book of Genesis says, then the Lord God called Adam and said to him, where are you? I want to believe that they had told their son the consequences of their misbehavior in the Garden of Eden. As loving parents, they must have disclosed also, mark this, that as loving parents, they must have disclosed also that after they had done this grievous mistake of disobeying God in the Garden of Eden, according to the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21, which says also for Adam and his wife, also God made a tonic of skin and clothed them. And I want to say that they must have disclosed by saying, God came with a tonic of skin after killing a lamb. So this was evidence, and this was something that I saw that uh, these parents must have done. The first 22 of Genesis 3 said, And the Lord God said, Behold, man has become like one of us to know both evil and good. And now rest, he puts his hand, and also take away also the tree of life, and he eats to live forever. I want to believe that they told these young men that God had to send them away from the Garden of Eden. Verse 24 of Genesis 3 says, So he drove out the man and he placed Jerubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a framing sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. I don't know whether at some point you have ever been chased from somewhere because you misbehaved. Maybe you stole or you misbehaved to your parents and you are a son or a daughter of that particular family and you are chased away. How was the experience? And if not, pray hard that this experience may not be yours. The parents of Cain and Apple, 
they were literally chased away from the Garden of Eden after they misbehaved. Having all these statements at the back of our mind, I want us to cross over to the book of Genesis chapter 4. First number 1 through first number 9. Come with me as I read for you. Now Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore a Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. I can imagine the happiness which was in the family of Adam and Eve after the arrival of the son Cain. Those who are parents, I want to imagine the, 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 the happiness that you accepted when you be held your first son or your first daughter. I want to believe this was the experience. This was the same happiness that this family accepted or experienced when Cain was born to them. The Bible says then she bore again this time his brother Abel. The Bible says that now Apple was a keeper of sheep and Cain was a tearer of the land. Mark those statements because I'll come back there. Firstly, the Bible says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit, mark that, of the ground to the Lord. First four says, and Apple also brought the firstborn of the flock and of their fat therein mark also that. And the Lord respected Apple and his offering, and he did also respect, and he did not also respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. I want to ask a question here. Uh, Cain has become annoyed. He's angry. But the question is, to who is Cain angry to? Is it Apple or is it God? Verse 6, the Bible says, So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance foreign? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin rise at the door. And this desire is for you, but also rule over it. Verse 6 tells us that God foresaw the result of Cain's anger. So God is giving a prior warning to Cain on what was ahead of him. First, for the, the, the first, first, first eight, the Bible says that now Cain talked to his brother Apple and said, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Apple, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Apple? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Brothers and sisters who are here and those who are watching, I want to say that uh, in the first, in first nine of Genesis chapter four, I'm finding the first arrogance ever recorded in the old scriptures. Because when God was asking Cain of the whereabout of his brother, the question was very clear by asking, where is your brother Apple? And Cain could have responded by saying, I've killed him. But Cain said, I don't know. But my question is, is this the truth that Cain is speaking of? Cain knew where Apple was. You know, there, there are some weather. I don't expect somebody to doze off and uh, make sure your neighbor is safe, that he doesn't break off his or her neck. I want to believe that uh, Cain was responsible 
for they were about all the missing of Apple. But because of Cain is arrogance, is responding back to God as if God was of his age. And I'm finding a God who is, you know, so patient. And if my young girl responds this to me as his father, I'm finding my hand shaking to administer justice to her. Because there are some things you can't dare and respond to your elder. Cain, how dare do you respond such to God? I want to imagine that it's a young man who is responding to his dad like this. Fathers in the house, I want to believe that if you own a pelt and it is tied within your groins, maybe you just get it out and administer justice. It is true that Cain and Apple came to the Lord. And my main concern here is not about the coming to the Lord, but my main concern here is how do they come to God? The truth is that all of us as Christians, at some point and even today, we present ourselves to God. Yes, I can come to church, but how do I come to church? Yes, we can present ourselves to God, but how do we present ourselves to the King of kings and the Lord of lords? The Bible says that uh, God rejected Cain and uh, God accepted Abel. And I want to say that uh, the point of acceptance and the point of rejection, it is not because they came to Christ Jesus, but it is on how they came to Christ Jesus. So it is either I am accepted before the Lord or I am rejected before the Lord, not because I came, but because of how I came. I want to ask this question from the onset as a child of God. When you come to the Lord, how do you come to God? You know, sometimes we casually come to God and we come to God as if we are coming to our colleague. And we forget that we are approaching a deity, a deity whom we are supposed to be well behaved before coming to him. The Bible says that God rejected Cain. The Bible says that Cain gave the offering of fruits and apple gave the offering of the first born of his flock. Let me point, point this and say this. That Cain gave the offering for the sake of giving. Without necessarily reminding the offering he was giving. And number two, the reason to us why he was giving. Let me just say this, my friends. That when we approach our God, there is a way we are supposed to come. Yes, he has said we are not supposed to come before the Lord empty-handed. But that aside, also there is a way we are supposed to come. And there is the reason to us why we are supposed to come in that way. Cain gave church the offering of fruits. Cain gave leftovers to God. Let me repeat here. That when Cain was presenting his offering before the Lord, he not only gave a wrong offering, but he as well gave a leftover. I don't know how many of us love leftovers. If you go to a family and you are served with a leftover of ugari, that one is demeaning. But I'm finding Cain coming before the Lord with a leftover. Whereas Apple came considering the offering and also the reason to us why he was to give that particular offering. And the point number two on Apple, 
apple gave the first, that is the first fruit of his possession. I want to briefly uh, take you somewhere and bring you back here. In the book of First Corinthians chapter 15 and the first number 20, the servant of the Lord speaks briefly the concept of first fruit where he says in first corinthians 15 20 he says but now is christ risen from the dead and they became the first fruit of them that is slept so meaning when christ jesus rose from the dead he meant that even those who are in the grave at some point they will do what they will do what, friends? You know, sometimes it, it, it is good to be sure that uh, whether I'm alone, then I adjust myself. And if you are here, let me know also. Bible says that uh, when Christ arose from the grave also, those who were to die after him also were supposed to do what? To resurrect. So meaning, first fruit mean, it means... That you are presenting your, your first portion, right, of what belongs to you anyway. But there is something also that has been left behind for you. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruit of his increase. So meaning the Israelites were not the only children of God. But also other nations were to come in after Israel. And lastly, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of your increase. So it means that when Cain came to God, he came with leftovers. He never came with the first fruits of his labor but when Apple came to the Lord he came with the past and he came with the first portion of his possession Genesis chapter 4 comes immediately after the fall of man so the animal offering was pointing to the only hope of the world, who is Christ Jesus. And Cain, as I told you earlier, Cain knew very well that after the fall in the book of Genesis chapter 3, whoever who was coming before the Lord, that is a way he was supposed to come. How was he supposed to come? He was to come with a lamp. And this lamp was pointing, remember this this lamp was pointing to the coming Messiah, our Savior, Christ Jesus. So when Apple came to Christ Jesus, he came and spitting and pointing to the coming Savior, Christ Jesus. So my question here is, when Cain came with the fruits left of us to God, to whom were these fruits pointing to? That is when the book of John chapter 1, the first 29, the Bible says that the, the same day John saw Christ coming and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So meaning the offerings which was, were accepted before the Lord, they were offerings which were pointing to the coming Lamb, Christ Jesus. The first Peter chapter 1 Verse 18 and verse 19, the Bible says, For as much as you know that we are not redeemed with the corruptible things, and let me add by saying, with the fruits as silver and gold, from the vain conversations received by tradition from fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ Jesus as a lamb without the premise and, and without spot. So the offering that God, you know, uh, wanted is an offering which was pointing to the coming king, Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. 
Cain came and said, even the produce from my farm also can point to the coming king. Cain had an offering of fruit from his land. And the apple, of course, had the first fruit of the lamb, of the frog. Hence, acceptance and rejection. This commanded respect to apple and it commanded disrespect to Cain. God accepts and respects obedience. But the disobedience, he rejects and disrespects. Let me repeat. God accepts and respects obedience. But God rejects and disrespects disobedience. When we come before the Lord with obedience, praise the Lord, we are accepted. But when we come before the Lord with a lot of disobedience, child of God, it is painful to say that we are disrespected and we are dishonored and we are rejected. So my question to us all friends who are here is, am I accepted before the Lord or am I accepted? And what informs and answers this question is on how I, I approach the Holy God. How is my relationship before and with God looked like? Friends, it was and is not about giving back to what belongs to God, but it is all about how you give and what you give plus the reason of your giving, not forgetting obedience and faithfulness. That when we come before the Lord, it is not, not all about just coming, but it is all about obedience and the reason to us why we are giving. Sometimes we uh, do things of a sudden in the church because we have forgotten the reason to us why God has commanded and requested us as his children to come and give. Friends, God is very particular on what he wants from his children. And when we do otherwise, God is not honored. God is disrespected. And in return, God disrespects us. Cain rejected, Apple accepted. God regarded and accepted Apple because Apple was a man who obeyed the Lord. Children of God who are here, where are Christians today? Christians like Apple who will take what the Lord is, you know, instructing his children each and every day. But sometimes we take the messages of the Lord like a chalk. And this is what costed the integrity and the seriousness of Cain. How I wish that we may choose obedience than choosing disobedience. How I wish that we may choose faithfulness than choosing to be unfaithful to the Lord. Friends. We all have choices to make as children of God. But I want to just say that all the choices we make as children of God, also they have consequences. You can't choose to disobey and to disrespect God and expect blessings in return. But I want to just say that God as a loving parent as Adam and Eve as graciously revealed to us his children what we need to do and on how we need to do it as Christians. Now the choice is left upon us. The choice is left upon us, number one, either to obey or to disobey. Number two, to be faithful or to be unfaithful. To love or to hate. You know, sometimes we do things as if things will remain constant forever. But I want to just say a time is coming 
when this world would stand still and everybody every one of us must leap either the fruits of obedience or the fruits of disobedience but remember every choice we make as children of god has consequences moses reminds us in the book of deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 19 and verse 20 where he says i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death blessings and curses therefore choose life that both you and your seed may live that you may love the lord your god that you may obey his voice and that you may grieve unto him for is thy life and thy strength of all your days that thou may dwell in the land which the lord saw unto your fathers abraham isaac and jacob friends god has given us a box of choices and it is upon us to choose either we want life or we want uh, uh death it is upon us to choose what we want either we want the blessings or we want curses and all these are determined by the choices we make on how we approach the whole god cain what some questions here to ask this gentleman by the name of cain cain was this the only option of giving because i'm seeing cain coming to the lord and saying that is what i heard yes cain that is what you heard but you want to say there is no another option you could have used to approach god the way you want to be approached let me just say that uh this is a good excuse but this good excuse does not substitute obedience and god's requirements sometimes we come to god with valid excuses and reasons to us why we have not done what is expected of us but there is no valid excuse or reason that can be used to substitute obedience and faithfulness you know there there, there, there there are some of us sometimes when you are cornered in a very bad way you say it is the devil and when you, you are asked where was the devil i don't know what, what it was imaginary but it was just the choices you made by yourself they say that we have always good excuses for not doing what is right brethren let us choose to obey it will pay someday praise the lord bible says in the book of acts chapter 17 verse 30 that during the time of ignorance god behaved as if he did not see but now he commands but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn from their sinful ways wrong way for acceptance the book of genesis chapter 4 verse 8 said that cain talked with his brother apple and told him let us just have a walk out there and it said and it came to pass when they were out there in the field that cain arose up against his brother apple and slay him so my question is is that why was cain killing apple cain was killing apple that he may be accepted let me say it differently that cain was killing apple that his gift his offering may be accepted and you know what do you think it's a, it's a it's it's a good deal right a good deal that is why even today if you want a job opportunity and you have somebody in the office who is seen at you you do the elimination method for you to raise up right yes so cain devised an evil way to cover up his mistakes and he said my brother come 
come we go and have a walk out there and he just raged he arose against his brother my question is was this necessary was this necessary do you want to tell me kind this is the only way to what is your acceptance you want to tell me Cain, that is no way you could have actually reapproached god through obedience than killing your brother apple i'm seeing something happening here that when apple requested was requested by Cain to go out there he trusted him and he said you know this is my brother but let me just tell you this even if it's your brother sometimes have a second thought there are people whom we have trusted so much to an extent we have given everything to them but on the wrong return they have turned to be devils there are people even the church whom we have trusted and said you know he him we can trust but in turn they turn to be more than you know <laughs> uh, devil himself i'm seeing you know an exchange between Cain and apple apple asking his brother Cain, Cain, must you kill me for you to be accepted do you want to tell me there is no any other way you can fight your way towards your acceptance than killing me i'm seeing apple trying to plead with his brother kindly my brother kind don't kill me that is another way but because of the sin and the rage and the anger that was vested upon Cain. Cain went ahead and killed his brother. I'm imagining the pain Adam and Eve went when their firstborn son, a son whom they had celebrated his path when he killed. You know, let me just say this. It is good if a stranger kills me but it pains when my brother kills me sometimes it's not too painful when my fellow church member you know you know it is too painful when my fellow church member kills me and it is terrible when a robber and a thief kills me so i'm finding it more weird and I'm imagining the pain the parents of Cain and Abel went through when a brother rose against his brother because he wanted to be accepted. Let me pause here and say this. Friends, children of God, there is another way for acceptance than rising against your fellow brother. Praise the Lord. There is another way of being accepted from the Lord than pursuing the way of unrighteousness because you want to be accepted. Bible said that uh, Cain killed his brother Abel. What was the mistake of Abel? I want to guess that the mistake only, the sin only Abel committed, it is because Abel did what was right you know there are people today who are hated because they do what is right and i'm finding that the only mistake you know blessed are you when you are mistreated when you are talked about when they pull you down they are doing that because you are doing what is right praise the lord Friend, just doing what is right costed the life of Abel. We always blame others for not doing what is right. Genesis 4.25. I have preached for 40 minutes. So I have a few minutes left. Those who are uncomfortable because I have preached too long. Verse 25, the Bible says that and Adam knew his wife. Adam knew his wife and the pair, a son, and they called his name Seth. For God said, she has appointed to me another seed instead of Abel, 
whom Cain slay. When Cain killed his brother Abel, he thought that God had learned out of options. But I want to just say that God had another option through Seth. Sometimes we may fight those who belong to us because we want to find our way through them. But I want to just say that we worship a God, a God who is not limited, a God who has other options beside Cain. Praise the Lord. So when we pull others down for the sake of acceptance, also God keeps on rejecting us. The elimination method does not always work. The spirit of Cain still is in the charge of God. People who are doing things for the sake of doing them. People who are putting others down because they want to rise up. By killing his brother, Cain was not accepted either, but God had another option, equally. When we fell from the Garden of Eden, the devil thought that he had won the battle, yes, but God had other options through Christ Jesus. Cain embroiled a satanic strategy by turning his anger against his brother Apple than turning his anger to God. Let me explain here. If today I mess up with you and you find that I'm stronger than you, what you will do, you will turn your anger to my children because there is no way you can approach me. So the person, not really the person, Apple was supposed to attack God. Because God had rejected him. But because God was powerful. Because there is no way Adam, you know, you know, Cain could have gotten hold of God. He just landed on the lava of God, Apel. That is what happens today. If I, you know, misbehave, if I offend you. Than coming direct to me, you will revenge through my children, and that is a satanic strategy, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 7 through verse 13, where it says that uh, war broke up in heaven, yes, Michael and his angels fought, yes, against the dragon, and the dragon also fought back, uh, but they did not prevail, nor was there place found in heaven yes no longer so the great dragon was cast here on earth who deceives the entire world he was cast on earth and when he was cast on earth verse 13 says that now he came when the dragon saw that he had been cast on earth he persecuted the woman that is the church because he had failed from approaching God Let me say this as I'm bringing this to the cross. That child of God, check your hunger properly. Manage your anger as a Christian. There are people when they are annoyed or agitated by something, they are too arrogant. They may end up even slapping those who are not supposed to be slapped. There are those people when they are angered, when they are annoyed, even cuts in the house, they are in problems. There are those people when they are annoyed or angered by somebody, they just passed off their screens in the house. And my simple question is, what has that screen done to you? There are people when they are annoyed, they do messy things even to an extent of messing other people's life. But I want to just say kindly, manage your anger. Don't let your anger manage and control you because it will lead you to sin. Mm. 
My concern and coverage here is this. God asked Cain, where is your brother? And a good question could have been, I've killed him. The same question is still ringers in the mind of God over his children. Because also when God came in the Garden of Eden, the same question he asked Adam, where are you? And Adam responded by saying, I heard your voice in the Garden of Eden, and I hid myself because I was, I was naked. These were unnecessary statements. Adam could have said, Lord, I'm hiding here. So sometimes we give some rem excuses, so wrong, you know, explanations, that the child saying, God, this is what we have done, and they come and rescue us. Now, this reminds us on what Cain could have done. Instead of Cain, after the rejection of God over the wrong you know, presentation of himself to God. My Bible tells me in the book of First John chapter 1 verse 9 that Cain could have conversed because the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and a chance to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. I want to uh, point some hope to somebody. That children of God, it is not too late. Irrespective of the way you have been living as a child of God, irrespective of your unfaithfulness, irrespective on, of, you know, of, on how you have been handling what, God, you know, what belongs to God, still there is room for your comeback. Because he says, if we converse, he truly will forgive us our trespasses. I know that the Bible says that all have sinned, and they have learned short of the glory of God. I think none of us is righteous than another. I think at some point we have behaved, we have done things like kind, but God is gracious. He can have us back. Irrespective of what we have done, God has a second chance for us. Even if Cain killed his brother, still God wanted Cain to come back to his repentance. Because he says in the book of Proverbs 28, 13, that he who covers his sins will not prosper. But he who converses and forsake, they will obtain mercy. And to say that none of us is righteous, and at some point we have misquandered, we have plundered, you know, what belongs to God. We have behaved in a way that is hinting that we are bad stewards. But God is merciful. But God is gracious. God is able to forgive us. God is able to bring us back to his arms of love and say, my child, I have forgiven you, praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what kind of life you are leading as a child of God. It matters less to God what you have done. If God could have forgiven, you know, if God uh, forgive this murderer by the name Cain, then he can forgive my unfaithfulness. Praise the Lord. If God, you know, forgave Cain, then he can forgive his church today. Sometimes our church is breeding out of roses and deaths because we behave right kind. That giving what belongs to God, we give as if we don't want. Those who came here, they had an experience of a woman who uh, my sister Lillian shared, a woman who gave one, and in return, he was served with five. That is my God. When you give back to God, God comes back with an interest. When Anna was pleading to God, saying, God, kindly give me a child, and I will give that child back to you, God came back to Anna with the five children. That is my God, and that is my God, and that is how God rewards faithfulness. That is how God rewards his people who are genuine. My friend, it is time that we have to change our attitude. It is time that we must desist from hatred. 
this time that we have to desist from gospel because it is said when gospel lands on the ears of a Christian who is wise that the gospel finds its, its grave, it is pallid and it is forgiven. But when gospel lands on the ears of a casual Christian, it defines its propeller and it is propelled to the next recipient. Sometimes we are propellers of news which are not good to an extent we are forgetting that God has called us to be good stewards of what he has given us. Let us desist from corruption. Let us desist from disobedience. Let us desist from unfaithfulness because God is love and he wants his charge back. So I want to say that either rejected or accepted, it is upon your choice. If you want God to accept you, indeed, he will accept you. And I find God that when I present myself to God in a way that God expects, the Bible says that God honors, that is to say God respects me and God accepts me. Praise the Lord. How beautiful would it be when all of us as New Diversity dear Church, when we come before the Lord, we are accepted and we are blessed. But the war, when we come before the Lord, because of our mischievous actions like Cain, when we are discarded, we are rejected, and we are left our own. And we try fighting our, our way out by doing what is not right, and on the wrong run, the rejection and the disrespect, it is extended. This is my prayer and my wish. That uh, may the good Lord have mercy upon us. Because sometimes we behave in a way that is suggesting that we have lost the path of righteousness. But because God is love, he's able to bring us back. And because he's able to bring us back, let us look upon the comparing love of Christ Jesus for his death on the cross of Calvary. That we may be informed on how we are supposed to behave on how we are supposed to live and on how we are supposed to walk and more importantly, on how we are supposed to be good stewards. This is my prayer, my wish, my desire to us all in Jesus' name.